Welcome to Y Lecture Online. I'm always surprised the type of problems they can come up with on the JEE test. Now this is a JEE main type of problem. It deals with electrostatic potential. Let's read it and find out why this is so interesting. 512 identical drops of mercury are charged to a potential of 2 volts each. The drops are joined to form a single drop. The potential of this drop is and so we're looking for numerical value in volts. So let's draw some pictures to get a feel of what's going on here. So we have 512 small mercury drops. So there's 512 of them. Each of them is charged. There we go. And we know that the radius there, let's call the radius R1, and the amount of charge we have on there, let's call it Q. And we know that the potential is equal to 2 volts. Now, what equation do we need for that? Well, it turns out that the equation that the potential, the electrostatic potential for, for charge, is equal to KQ divided by R. So in this case, for the voltage for one of these mercury spheres, with radius R1, would be K times Q, the charge on the on the, mer on the mercury and divided by the radius. So now we're going to take 512 of those, join them together to form a big ball of mercury and all of those charges of the 512 will end up on the single mercury sphere like this. Now the total charge Q2 is going to be 512 Q, the charge, and let's call it Q1, so 512 of the charges placed on each of the small mercury spheres, so we'll call this Q1, and notice that this is now going to have a different radius, call it R2, and so we know that the potential in that big sphere, V2, is going to be equal to K, which is simply a constant, times Q2 divided by the new radius, and of course Q2 is going to be K times 512 Q1 divided by R2. So that means that if the radii were the same, the voltage on the big sphere would be 512 times the voltage on the, on the small sphere. Of course, the radii are not the same, so we now have to figure out what would be the radius of that large sphere. So now we're dealing with the volume of a sphere. We know that the volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay. So volume 1 is equal to this because we use R1. How about volume 2? Well, volume 2 is going to be 512 times volume 1. And we know that volume 2 can be defined as 4 thirds pi R2 cubed. So that means that this can be said equal to this and this can be said equal to that. So we have V2 is equal to 512 V1, V2 is 4 thirds pi R2 squared, oh, not squared, but cubed, which is equal to 512 4 thirds pi R1 cubed. And now, of course, this allows us to find the radius of the large sphere, 4 thirds cancels out, pi cancels out, and, hmm, let's see here, we could then say that R2 is equal to the cube root of 512 times R1. Now, what is the cube root of 512? Well, let's see, 16 times 16, how about 8 times 8 is 64 times 8? Hmm, I think that might be it. 64, 4 times, yes, that is it. So we have R2 is equal to 8 times R1. Okay. So now that we have that relationship, we can plug that in there. We can say that V2 is equal to K512 times Q1 divided by R2, and R2 is 8 times R1. Hmm. 8 times R1. So what's 512 divided by 8? Well, let's see here, uh, that would be equal to 64. So this is equal to 64 KQ1 divided by R1, 
and oh, 64, not 46, 64. And since this is equal to V1, that would be equal to 64 times V1, which is 64 times 2 volts, which is equal to 128 volts. And so that's the answer we're looking for. 128 volts will be the potential of the large sphere. Again, you have to be able to visualize what's happening. We have a small mercury sphere of radius R1, charge Q1, that has been charged to 2 volts. Then we take 512 of those and combine them into a single mercury ball, so therefore we have 512 times the charge. We don't know what the new radius is, and we're trying to find the new voltage. We know that the voltage can be defined by KQ over R. And so that's the same KQ2 over R2, and Q2 is 512 times Q1. We just have to find the relationship between R2 and R1. We do that over here by realizing that the volume is 4 thirds pi R1, uh, pi, pi R cubed, and then we set the two volumes equal to each other. V2 is 512 times V1, and from that we get the ratio of R2 to R1. We then plug that in here, and we crank out the 128 volts. So it's it's simple enough once you realize that you can use this equation to find the potential and then to realize that this is how you find the relationship between the two radii and that is how it's done.